This is a podcast of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. To learn more about how you can support Scripps, visit us online at scripps.ucsd.edu. Imagine an underwater world with robots flying thousands of feet below the surface. This is the vision of scientists at Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego and others around the world who are wiring the seafloor in an effort to build ocean observatories that make long-term measurements on the environmental threats impacting the oceans. The National Science Foundation recently funded the Ocean Observatory Initiative, known simply as OOI. When fully built and implemented, OOI will consist of four global, two regional, and two coastal scale observatories that will be commanded from land-based laboratories to measure global changes in the ocean and relay the information back to scientists. We have to be able to make these long-term measurements where we know that the annual changes, for example, temperature, temperature changes vastly everywhere but Loya. But on the East Coast, it freezes and then it's remarkably hot and so on. So you have these huge temperature variations like uh, we are seeing today, but overall there's also a long-term temperature change and change in the climate. If you see something interesting like a, uh, an, a large eddy going by, um, you can say, okay, there's something interesting happening now. Let's start taking data more quickly. Or if a weather satellite spots that there's a hurricane going by the region, you can say, okay, now we're going to we want to start studying how the ocean mixes in response to this hurricane, so we'll take all the sensors in the top thousand meters and tell them to start sampling every five minutes instead of every two hours. Scripps professor Uwe Send and colleagues at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution will build and maintain four deep ocean observatory nodes, two in the Atlantic and two in the Pacific, in understudied regions that could yield information sought after by researchers from several different oceanographic disciplines. Each node will have four deep ocean moorings and three underwater gliders. The first, off Argentina, is set to be deployed in late 2012. In less than three years now, we have to be ready for deploying the first site in the Argentine Basin. So we will have to very soon start with the actual assembly of at least a prototype system. And then in about a year's time that will be tested together with Woods Hole Institution to integrate all the systems that will be deployed at each of the global sites. So we send the data acoustically to a glider that flies by, asks for the data. The glider goes to the surface and then it relays the data back to shore through a satellite system. So we have this multiple hop system to get data from the interior of the ocean back to the laboratory. And we can have people in the laboratory change the programming of any of the sensors out here by talking to the satellite. Satellite talks to the glider. The glider says, oh, I've got a message for this modem down here. So we'll send the message to this modem. Modem's data comes in and goes into the controller and it changes the programming of the sensors. So we have bi-directional communications, satellite to glider, to acoustics, to package in the OOI, and that's something that's fairly new. The backbone of the observatory is its cyber infrastructure. The computer information network controls the two-way communications between the instruments and the scientists. I think it's a big revolution in the way data are managed and handled that we are able to make those data open and real time available to anyone. You can have people everywhere begin to run these virtual observatories and you're running it through a thing that in many ways would look very much like iTunes. You can run a science experiment of your very own with your virtual observatory. In fact, you could have 10 of these things if you had 10 different interests. Every individual would have 10 separate virtual observatories, each doing a different science problem. You could, if you're in a classroom, the teacher could supervise creating your own observatories for something so you as a student would begin, even at the grade school level, to understand how the variability around the Earth changes in terms of temperature, wind speed, and so on. OOI has another component as well, one that will help students understand the mission of this ambitious project. Birch Aquarium at Scripps science educator Cheryl Peach is working closely with ORCID and national science educators to integrate educational goals into the observatory design to make the information readily available for science education. 
We're actually entering a time when the way people access information and the way they process information is changing rapidly. We're really in the information age. So there's a tremendous amount out there. Uh, what we're trying to tap into with the Xbox gaming is kids' fascination with, addiction to, in some cases, Xbox games. We want to put it into an informal science center setting and see if we can get students to actually learn something while they're playing those games. And so what we're trying to do is recreate an environment on the seafloor that represents a deep sea environment as well as the presence of ocean observing equipment on the seafloor monitoring that environment. We think it's a great way to attract people and hook them into actually being interested in understanding what ocean observatories are all about. This is a, a new and very different capability that the OI will be providing and one should really see the OI in its entirety, not just the global component, but together with the two coastal arrays, with the regional cable observatory and the cyber infrastructure and the education and outreach component. If you take all this together, it's really an unprecedented uh, research capacity that the OI is providing. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.